Now, I said back in our little um, thought experiment, you're a hominid walking on the plains of Africa. Is it just the wind or a dangerous predator? What's the difference between those? Well, a wind is inanimate. A dangerous predator is an intentional agent. And I call this process agenicity. That is, the tendency to infuse patterns with meaning, intention, and agency, often invisible beings from the top down. This is an idea that we got from a fellow Tedster here, uh, Dan Dennett, who talked about and taking the intentional stance. So it's a type of that expanded to explain, I think, a lot of different things. Souls, spirits, ghosts, gods, demons, angels, aliens, intelligent designers, government conspiracists, and all manner of invisible agents with power and intention are believed to haunt our world and control our lives. I think it's the basis of animism and polytheism and monotheism. It's the belief that aliens are somehow more advanced than us, more moral than us, and the narratives always are that they're coming here to save us and rescue us uh, from on high. The intelligent designer is always portrayed as this super intelligent moral being that comes down to design life. Even the idea that government can rescue us, that's no longer the wave of the future, but that is, I think, a type of agenticity. The, uh, projecting somebody up there, big and powerful, will come rescue us. And this is also, I think, the basis of conspiracy theories. There's somebody hiding behind there, pulling the strings, uh, whether it's uh, the Illuminati or the Bilderbergers. But this is a pattern detection problem, isn't it? Some patterns are real and some are not. Was JFK assassinated by a, a conspiracy or by a lone assassin? Well, if you go there, uh, there's people there on any given day, like when I went there here, showing me where the different shooters were. My favorite one was he was in the manhole, and he popped out at the last second and took that shot. But of course, Lincoln was assassinated by a conspiracy, so we can't just uniformly dismiss all patterns like that, because let's face it, some patterns are real. Some conspiracies really are true. <laughs> Explains a lot, maybe. Uh, and 9-11 as a conspiracy theory. It is a conspiracy. We did a whole issue on it. 19 members of Al-Qaeda plotting to fly planes into buildings constitutes a conspiracy, but that's not what the 9-11 truthers think. They think it was an inside job by the Bush administration. Well, that's a whole other lecture, but you know how we know that 9-11 was not orchestrated by the Bush administration? Because it worked. So we are natural-born dualists. Our agenticity process comes from the fact that we can enjoy movies like these because we can imagine, in essence, uh, continuing on. We know that if you stimulate the temporal lobe, you can produce a feeling of out-of-body experiences, near-death experiences, which you can do by just touching an electrode to the temporal lobe there. Or you can do it through loss of consciousness by accelerating in a centrifuge. You get a hypoxia or a lower oxygen, and the brain then senses that uh, there's an out-of-body experience. Uh, you can use, uh, which I did, went up and did uh, Michael Persinger's God Helmet that bombards your temporal lobes with electromagnetic waves and you get a sense of out-of-body experience. So I'm going uh, to end here with a short video clip that sort of brings all this together. It's just a minute and a half. It ties together all this into the power of expectation and the power of belief. Go ahead and roll it. This is the venue they chose for their fake auditions for an advert for lip balm. We're hoping that we can use part of this in a national commercial, right? And this is a test on some lip balms that we have over here. Yeah. And these are our models who are going to help us, Roger and Matt. Okay. And we have uh, our own lip balm and we have a leading brand. Okay. Would you have any problem kissing our models no. to test <laughs> That was fine. That would be fine. <laughs> okay. Uh, so that this is uh, a blind test, I'm going to ask you to, to go ahead and put a, a blindfold okay. on. Okay, now can you see anything? No. Hold up so you can't even see down. Okay. It's completely blind now, yeah. right? Yes. Okay. Now what I'm going to be looking for in this test is um, how soft it makes the lips, okay. the texture. Right, and maybe if you can discern any flavor or not. Okay. Have you ever done a kissing test before? <laughs> Here, okay, one step in. Okay, now I'm going to ask you to pucker up. Pucker up big and lean in just a little bit, okay?
good. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks.